In the first part of the video, we began our journey to the impressive collection of valuable possessions in Buckingham Palace. There were the two-penny blue Mauritius stamp, the mosaic Fabergé egg, and the beautiful chandeliers found in the palace which all cost millions of dollars. Now let's continue exploring what other must-see items in the palace. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and tap the bell button so you won't miss any of our interesting videos. Queen Elizabeth II's art collection is truly exceptional. It is considered among the most impressive and valuable in the world. The Queen's Gallery at Buckingham Palace serves as a treasure trove with an abundance of priceless art. In fact, it's the biggest collection owned by one person with a massive one million objects. This collection spans a diverse range of treasures, including 7,000 paintings and over 150,000 works on paper with 30,000 watercolors and drawings. On top of that, there are about 450,000 photos in the collection. There's also a huge variety of art pieces, totaling around 700,000. These include furniture, ceramics, textiles, carriages, weapons, jewelry, and more. Inside the collection, You'll find clocks, musical instruments, dishes, plants, manuscripts, books, and sculptures. These items show the wide range of Queen Elizabeth II's interests and what she's collected over time. Each piece has its own story and adds to the rich cultural heritage of the royal collection. Queen Elizabeth II's art collection has a long and fascinating history that goes back to the 16th century. It all started with King Henry VIII who began gathering artworks from all over Europe and beyond. However, the collection took off during the time of King Charles I. He was really into art and collected much of it, especially from Italy and Flanders. His collection featured works by big-name artists like Anthony van Dyck, Rubens, Holbein, Titian, and Mantegna. Sadly, when King Charles I was executed in 1649, his collection was split up. The people who didn't like him sold off many of the art pieces. Some of it ended up in museums in other countries, like the Louvre in Paris and the Prado in Madrid. Luckily, when the monarchy was restored in 1660 under Charles II, they managed to get back some of the lost artworks. Charles II even got some new pieces, including gifts from the Dutch Republic. This kept the royal art collection growing and getting even more impressive, setting the stage for what Queen Elizabeth II has today. Since then, each monarch has continued to expand the collection according to their tastes and interests. Queen Elizabeth II has left her mark on it by introducing some modern and contemporary pieces. You can discover works by renowned artists such as Andy Warhol, Anish Kapoor, Lucian Freud, and David Hockney. But the collection's treasures extend far beyond contemporary art. It includes works of Canaletto and Vermeer, and more than 30 drawings of the great Leonardo da Vinci. Queen Elizabeth II has taken great care to preserve and promote the collection. She actively supports its conservation efforts and ensures that it is made accessible to the public. To manage and safeguard the collection, she established the Royal Collection Trust, entrusted with its care on behalf of the monarchy and the nation. Determining the exact value of the Queen's art collection is difficult because it's not up for sale and doesn't have a market price. However, experts believe it could be worth around 10 billion pounds or even more. Presently, approximately 3,000 items from the collection are on loan to museums worldwide, while many others are regularly showcased in rotating exhibitions, ensuring that these priceless treasures continue to be enjoyed by audiences across the globe. At the moment, approximately 3,000 items from the collection are loaned out to museums worldwide. Meanwhile, other pieces are displayed in exhibitions that are updated regularly. Aside from Queen Elizabeth's breathtaking art collection, she also amassed an extensive collection of jewelry, crowns, and tiaras. These pieces reflect her personal style, family heritage, and regal taste. Some of the jewelry has been passed down through generations. Others were gifts from fellow royals and important figures, while some were specially commissioned by the Queen herself or crafted by renowned jewelers. In this impressive collection, you'll find a mix of rare and unique gems alongside elegant yet stunningly beautiful pieces. One of the most famous items is the Imperial State Crown, a symbol of the British monarchy's power. It's been worn by kings and queens since the 15th century. 
The current version, made in 1937, is used by a new monarch for their first royal procession after their coronation. The imperial state crown is adorned with thousands of diamonds, sapphires, emeralds, rubies, and pearls, making it quite a heavy piece. Its top cross even features a special sapphire with a fascinating history. While the true value of the imperial state crown is hard to pin down, experts think it could be worth billions of pounds. For fancy events like banquets, Queen Elizabeth II wears pieces from her extensive jewelry collection, which includes over 300 stunning items like brooches, necklaces, bracelets, earrings, tiaras, rings, watches, and pendants. These jewels are separate from the crown jewels, which were made for Charles II and his successors. Some were made for queens who ruled or married kings, while some kings also contributed to the collection. While serving as the monarch of Australia, Canada, and New Zealand, Queen Elizabeth II proudly adorned herself with these extraordinary jewels. They were frequently highlighted in official portraits commissioned for these realms, enhancing the grandeur and elegance of her role as the sovereign. One item in Buckingham Palace that is considered priceless is Queen Victoria's wedding gown. It is an icon in fashion history. She wore it when she married Prince Albert of Saxe-Coburg and Gotha on February 10, 1840, at the Chapel Royal of St. James's Palace in London. The dress was made of heavy silk satin in a simple cream color, adorned with intricate handmade Honiton lace from Devon, England. Orange blossoms, symbolizing fertility, decorated the skirt, while a wreath adorned the queen's head. Her bridesmaids carried the train, which was an impressive 18 feet long. At the time, it was unusual for royal brides to wear white. They typically wore colorful dresses or Brussels lace. But Victoria chose white to support British textile industries, especially in Honiton. She also wanted to show herself as a modest bride, rather than emphasizing her status and wealth as a monarch. This choice started a trend, and soon white wedding dresses became popular among Victorian brides of all social classes, symbolizing purity, innocence, and romance. While Victoria wasn't the first royal to marry in white, she popularized the tradition that continues today. She kept her wedding dress until she died in 1901. It passed through several generations of the royal family, eventually reaching Queen Elizabeth II. For over 180 years, Queen Victoria's wedding gown has been a treasured part of the royal family's history, passed down from one monarch to the next. Another interesting historical piece found in Buckingham Palace is Erdley Norton's astronomical clock. Erdley Norton, a famous clockmaker in 18th century London, was known for his amazing clocks, especially his astronomical ones that displayed celestial events. One of his best works was an astronomical clock he made for King George III in 1765. The clock is now kept in the library of Buckingham Palace as part of the Royal Collection Trust. This clock has four sides, each showing different aspects of time and astronomy. The front dial shows the time of day using a 24-hour scale, with hands for both average time and solar time. It also has a painted scene showing the sun's path across the sky. Another small dial on this side shows the time in 30 different places around the world, all relative to Greenwich Mean Time. The scene adjusts to account for the changing seasons, making sure the sun rises and sets correctly every day of the year. On the left side, there's a dial for the date, with three smaller dials showing the day of the week and month and controlling the clock's movement. The gears transfer time to the back dial, which shows the age and phases of the moon, as well as high and low tides. On the right side, there's an orrery, a model of the solar system, showing the planet's positions according to Copernicus's model as they orbit the sun. Made of mahogany with silver and enamel dials and mounts, Norton's astronomical clock has a complex mechanism with three-train fusee-driven movement and a special escapement. There's also a pendulum at the back that helps keep the time precise. This clock is considered one of Norton's best works and is one of the most advanced astronomical clocks ever made, showcasing his incredible skill and craftsmanship. If you want to know more about the unique pieces in Buckingham Palace, please click the last installment of this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and tap the notification button to stay updated on the latest videos.